What exactly is the Skylancer that I couldn't stop accidentally talking about the other day? That's what we're looking at today on Vintage Space. So this is sort of an accidental question that you guys raised. In my last video, which I will put a link to right about here, um, I talked about how Scott Crossfield was the first man to break Mach 2 in the Douglas Skyrocket, but I kept talking about it as though it was the Skylancer. And a lot of you guys mentioned that Skylancer is actually a pretty great name for an airplane. Well, it is a great name for an airplane, and it was an airplane. So what was the Skylancer, and why could I not get it out of my head the other day when I was recording that video? The Skylancer was another aircraft built by Douglas, properly called the Douglas F. 5D-1, the Skylancer was built for the Navy as an all-weather fighter interceptor, but it never made it to production. Only four were ever built, and NASA received at least one at the High Speed Flight Station, or the Flight Research Center as it was later called, at Edwards Air Force Base in California. And here's why it gets stuck in my head. The Skylancer had a wing platform that was very similar to that projected for the dinosaur. Now Dinosaur, as some of you may know, is one of my all-time favorite programs that never came to be. This was a NASA Air Force joint program designed to develop a glider that could go into orbit. It would launch vertically on a Titan III missile and then return turn to Earth and land like a plane on a runway, kind of reminiscent of the space shuttle. One of my favorite tidbits about the dinosaur is that Neil Armstrong was one of the pilots earmarked to be the first to fly it, or at least eventually join the astronaut corps that would pilot the dinosaur in space. And as a test pilot working at Edwards at the time, one of his jobs was to figure out a launch abort scenario for the dinosaur. He noticed that the Skylancer had a very similar aerodynamic layout to the dinosaur glider, and so he used it as a proxy when developing his launch abort maneuver. Basically, what the maneuver boiled down to was because the dinosaur was designed to launch vertically, the pilot would use an engine to boost itself off a rocket that was exploding to gain enough height to roll over, spot the runway, and glide down to a smooth landing. And Armstrong practiced this maneuver flying the Skylancer. So I hope that clears up why I got the Skylancer and Skyrocket confused. Granted, guys, it was the end of a very long day. Nevertheless, Scott Crossfield was the first to break Mach 2 in the Douglas Skyrocket, and Neil Armstrong worked out the launch abort for the dinosaur in the Skylancer. I love dinosaur, and I get into some of the roots of the program in my new book, Breaking the Chains of Gravity, which is coming out in the UK on October 22nd and in the US on January 12th. So, do you have questions about the Douglas Skylancer, or the Douglas Skyrocket for that matter, since I can't seem to keep them separate in my head, or about Neil Armstrong, dinosaur, or anything else about space? Leave them in the comment section below, as well as things you would like to see covered and answered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for daily Vintage Space updates. I am AST Vintage Space. And of course, subscribe right here so you never miss my two weekly episodes.